So you might be saying, didn't I just post a video of the 1390 on Marvanka? Um, and yes, technically I did. Um, this video is actually from the other side of Maravanka, um, but even if it was the same side with the same tank on the same map, I would make a video if I thought that there was some important aspect of the gameplay to talk about, um, like there is in this particular game. So, of course, what that means is that you should just watch all of the videos and probably upload them as well. Anyhow, so this is a game that we had last night, and I'm going to talk about the northern attack here and what our team does right and wrong and what their team does right and wrong. So one good thing that you can do, or one easy thing that you can do from the north, particularly as a, as a fast tank, is to go over into this area, this A2 area, and there's a bush here that you can use to spot um, and actually get uh, shots from, particularly if you have um, gun depression. And so I'm headed over there. There's an STB-1 there that's headed this way, T-54A1 as well, that's going to end up going up there. They kind of uh, crowd a little bit. And anyway, so this bush right here is where you can go to spot, and it's very easy to get there without being detected by just staying on this zone line and then basically taking a 90 degree turn. You don't want to just sit in that bush because it's very convenient bush to blind fire. You just want to jump up there, spot, and then just roll back and then scroll along this back line. Um, and so that's normally what I do when when there's a tank that has a better gun than me, like this STB-1 and gun depression, I will let them have the bush because there's not much space behind it in order to use it effectively. Um, so this guy might be a decent player and uh, he's got a better gun with me and he's got sufficient gun depression to use this effectively if he so chooses. So I'll go off to this side and I'll try to spot from the other side. And we already knew the 50B was coming up, and then I this guy runs back into me. And at this point, I glance back here, and I see that the T-54A1 is coming up here as well. And if these guys don't use this bush, then they're going to be lit the whole time. And basically, I'm gonna, probably going to get caught by incidental fire. So I'm going to get try to get the heck out of dodge here. There's just too much crowding here. And our Waffle sitting out in the middle here, and our STB-1 just got himself killed. So right off the bat we're down to 10s, uh, and without doing a whole lot of damage. I'm going to take a shot from the T their T-57 uh, on the way out. So I'm waiting over here to drop spot. So what we do know is that they've pushed up a number of 10s into here. And when we look over here, so basically our Foch 155 and T57 Heavy have moved up to this position. This position is, is really important in from the, from the northern perspective because if they send anyone to this E2 area, these guys can have shots on them. Right. And so if, as long as they're not pressured by anything that comes up through the forest, you know how we normally p would play that forest, uh, if there's anything here, that if we can keep them lit, these guys will get free shots on them. And so our T-57 Heavy has just been clipping out on these guys. Okay, so now basically what happened is that they had three tens here that died. We had two tens here that died, um, but our tens were, were kind of poorly positioned uh, in, in the open. Uh, their tens died mostly because of this fire from across here. This guy does 700 damage the entire game. The STB-1 did zero damage. Um, so most of the fire that those guys took, they were lit by this T-44 um, and by this T-54 and to a lesser extent by me, but most of the fire that they took was actually from this corner over here. And then uh, what I want to do is I want to check if there's anything else there. And then I'll move up here and then I'll pause for a second and I kind of look at the mini-map and I see where my team is and they're sort of moving forward so hopefully they will take the hint. And their bat shot shoots the ground 
and then shoots the ground. Right, and then this is somebody from the south shoots the ground. This batch out starts coming this way. And then by that time, my support has gotten here. And so we're able to clear out that this area. And so now our guys move in. And now this is a good place for them. And now remember that the only reason why this was was winnable situation was because these guys were not harassed at all and they were allowed to just own the guys in E2. If these guys had been, if, if their south had been more aggressive in spotting our forest, these guys would have had to push back. That's what I call looking off. It, uh, these guys would have had to push back and then maybe some of their tens would have lived. I mean, maybe not the ones that like poked up and over, but... And so, despite the fact that we've traded really efficiently over in the, in, on the west side, the scores are still pretty close. And then our E75 kept pushing down here aggressively, and that ended up ends up being a good thing because he lights Artie. They have a Pershing that comes up over here. Their bat comes back across to try to help. But the E75 has already got to a good position where they're kind of screwed. And then so now I'm just trying to uh, figure out how I can spot on this upper plateau. And then now we've gotten their artillery down. And they still, they, they never really threatened our forest too much. Uh, they sort of did it in a one at a time fashion, but it was, it was too little too late. And then I'm just getting in a position to shoot the Pershing. Because as these guys push along this front of the hill, the Pershing's gonna come out the back. And then it's it's still pretty close, so we're gonna have to figure out how to clean out their forest. We know that that T28 proto moved up. Our STIs moved in, but it's I'm not I can't quite get there fast enough to, to actually give any support. So we do know that the T28 proto is right there. And I want to see if I can light him, but I cannot from this bush. And so I'm waiting for our batch at uh, artillery to reload. And our T-57 will push forward a little bit uh, as well, so I'm going to try to coordinate my push with him. And then the bat chat says he's ready. And then I get lit by the T-28. He's actually behind this corpse right here. And then now it's still fairly close, but when they only have two guns, um, as long as we don't YOLO too hard, should be fine. And then it's just the Leo left, so I see that our T-57 is still charging down there, so I go to basically hook up with him. And that's pretty much that. And then, so again, you know, when I when I'm on the south, I always say that 
you have to be careful how you play these hills. You can push up to E2, but you have to do it cautiously. The other thing is that I, I think that you should clear the forest if you're on the south. And if you see guys in E2, you need to make sure that this is clear. Otherwise, those guys are just going to get wrecked from over here. And then this is the stats from that game. So, I, I mean, I, I didn't really do that much. Um, I was kind of lucky that I didn't die after chasing down that bat chat. Uh, but, uh, you know, our, our team in general, um, like if you look specifically that... Uh, T57 uh, heavy that was in the forest. He didn't really have to drive that far, but he did like 6k damage, most of which was on our on the west side of the map. Um, and so that really goes to show you how sort of vulnerable that position is if you allow them to to camp in or to not camp to be in that E8 area, which is another reason why clearing that eight line if you're on the south um, becomes incredibly important. Um, that's about all I can think of for this particular match, so hope that was helpful in teaching you something, and thanks for watching.